Whether it's sandbox or franchise mode, selecting the wrong species to begin your zoo can be a costly mistake. Why would this be such a big problem? Begin asking yourself questions around crowd management, animal stress and well-being, donation profits, and so much more. All these issues could and probably will still occur, even with due diligence utilising one-way glass and recessed viewing techniques. In this video, I'll help you select the all-important first animal that you build for, with carefully researched information from the real world to ensure realism in your zoo. All around the world, zoos and wildlife parks begin the guest journey with a captivating entrance animal, directly after the turnstiles or gates, to set the tone for the experience to come. Some zoos even build exhibits that are in view from parking lots or queues for admission tickets. These previews of what lies inside can be seen at zoos such as San Francisco, with vistas of their savannah exhibit from outside the gate or Hillsville Sanctuary, Melbourne, Australia, with koalas. Keep in mind that for the association of zoos and aquariums, an exhibit cannot be part of the exterior boundary. So to get around that, you would have to build a further wall or fence. As with all of your realistic habitat builds, it can be helpful to consult the AZA website for animal care manuals and considerations. So, let's select your first species. The general rule of thumb for an entrance animal would be selecting a species that's pretty loud and visually attractive, an attention seeker. Well to a certain degree. You should try to find a balance between grabbing a visitor's attention, but not being too flashy so there's less incentive to walk around the rest of the zoo. I'll leave a link in the description, taking you to a spreadsheet that shows you all of the appeal data for Planet Zoo. Zoos usually try to keep their big ticket animals at the back of the zoo, so that you have to spend more time in the park to see them, increasing profits and donations, guiding people past animals they wouldn't normally be drawn to the zoo for sightings of. It all builds some anticipation. So here's five popular first animal suggestions for your zoo. Number one, flamingos. Flamingos are so often a starter animal for zoos because they're simply both noisy and brightly coloured. They're relatively easy to care for and can live in fairly large family units in both the wild and captivity. And so the flock becomes somewhat of a weenie, a visual magnet. However, in Planet Zoo Beware, these greater flamingos get stressed. If you do decide to use flamingos directly at your entrance, make sure that they can hide in private shelters, are viewed through one-way glass and surrounded by do not disturb signs. You could even create directional signage or billboards to encourage movement onwards into the zoo. Number two, small primates. Small primates can be a good draw around entrance areas, especially in water-based exhibits. It was seen that primates on islands can be bold and exciting for guests who make lots of healthy donations to your zoo. Consider monkeys or lemurs, maybe even Japanese macaques for the cooler by zoos who shouldn't require huge enclosures either. Number three, meerkats. Meerkats are everywhere. I mean, every zoo you look at seems to have them in their collection. These small carnivores found in Southern Africa can live in groups of up to 30 individuals strong, and it's their active behaviors burrowing, foraging, and standing guard that can be quite appealing to entering visitors. You'll typically see meerkats living outdoors and then having a simple heating element inside a house. Meerkats are relatively hardy, so they can spend lots of time outside on display, even in cold winters. You may have seen several meerkat enclosures in one zoo before. It's like that there's been a dominant split, beginning a new group or coalition of their own. In the wild, almost 20% of meerkats are killed by other meerkats. Meerkats do require a higher investment to be aware of though. As a small vulnerable prey species, they'll be wanting to dig multiple systems of holes, where if one house was compromised by a digging predator, they could run away to another house nearby. Zoos obviously have to consider putting mesh or wire under the ground to prevent escapes. Number four, tortoises. They're great, so so popular with guests, generating thousands in donation bins in no time. They work really well early in a zoo's life, but when guest numbers grow, they begin to get stressed. The problem is that they're just so slow. They take so long to reach their hiding place with ambient speakers or screening plant enrichment that they're always stressed by the time they arrive, so they might do better in a quieter corner of a zoo. Even if you make the enclosure huge, you'll find guests complaining about not being able to see the animals. Not quite the best first impression. Number five, of course many zoos reserve their main draws, such as big cats or elephants. Hold on, you must be thinking, what about Chester Zoo? They've got elephants upon entry. There's other examples, such as Oregon, with a fantastic mountain goat exhibit at its entrance. Kansas City's got an excellent river otter and swan pair, in fact, entrance exhibits can become the most memorable or most easily forgotten sections of a zoo. It's a challenge to embrace and enjoy, with no necessary right or wrong. I'd love to hear which animal will be your first next time around. Let me know in the comments section down below. 